happy 2020. I am very late in saying that and I realize it's been a long time since I've made a video. <laughs> so my apologies. I feel very like, oh, this is weird. I'm making a video. It's been a while. And also it's like, cool, probably could have made your bed. Probably could have shut your bathroom door and your wardrobe door and just made a bit more effort. But I just tend to find when I really kind of like have to set everything up for a video and like make a set almost like, I know like it's not that hard to like make your bed at the bare minimum, but I just, when it's more cash, I feel like it's easier to make it. I talk better. <laughs> I wanted to start 2020 out with a video on this little jar, which I think I've mentioned. If not, there's a vlog coming where I do mention it, I think. <laughs> Honestly, I've got so much footage to edit. It's a bit of a joke. It's getting a bit out of hand, but we'll get there. But this jar basically is a jar where you keep it in your room or you keep it somewhere close throughout the year and as you go you write little things in it that have been good things that have happened to you or achievements and things like that. So in 2019 I wrote down a lot of things that happened that were really good memories or were really fun or were achievements and I think I've got about 20, 20 something, maybe 22, that's the biggest one I can see. I know that seems like really not that much, but if you think about it, that's almost like two a month. And I try to avoid writing like the little things. I wrote like, wow, that was really fun. I had a really good time. Or like, wow, that was a really nice memory. Things like that. So I probably could have been better, but this year, 2020, I aim to do it again and to be better. So anyway, I'm gonna empty out the jar and I just thought I'd share with you what my year kind of entailed and my best moments. I just thought this would be a kind of cool New Year's video and I did intend to film it a lot earlier, but I was away. <laughs> USA vlog is coming. Anyway, so number one, if I find it. Hopefully these aren't too like, you had to be there kind of moments or like, you know, like personal to me that wouldn't be that interesting. I hope this is semi-interesting, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be making the video. Number one. Okay, so I started my 2019 on day one, the first of the first, 2019, watching the fireworks in Edinburgh with my best friend from England. So we went up on a trip to Edinburgh, we had the best time, and yeah, we stuck it out New Year's Eve night, even though we were both really tired and we're both grandmas, and we love just going to bed early, having a little cup of tea, some biscuits, watching a movie, not even that. And going to bed early <laughs> so we really stuck it out and stayed for the fireworks and I'm really glad we did because it was a really magical way to start the new year and being with her was awesome because we don't get to see each other that much because we live half the world away so that was a great way to start the jar and I'm really happy that I got to do that number two if I can find it I did try to label them with numbers but obviously they get mixed up so then you forget like what number you're up to when something happens number two got asked to be Eleanor's maid of honor so my best friend from high school asked me to be her maid of honor which honestly was crazy because you just never think oh cool I'm at the age now where my friends are gonna start getting married and having babies and I am, so it's, yeah, it's a bit scary, but honestly, her asking me to be her maid of honour was such an honour, without sounding cliche, and it was such a lovely wedding, and I'm just really glad that I got to be a part of it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Number three, where you at? Number three. This is, I should have put these in order. <laughs> Number three. Oh my god, this is a really big one, and kind of personal, so kind of nervous to read this but end of January finally put my happiness over loneliness stood up for myself made a very tough but right decision and stopped seeing a boy who couldn't give me what I wanted or what I deserved left a painful situation so long story short I basically was seeing a guy and I wouldn't even say seeing because we met and it was really nice and I felt like we had this connection and we had a really good time together when we hung out. But he would kind of like 
not contact me for a week or like never reply to my texts or leave me on red you know that typical situation where you just feel really unappreciated and undeserved it was just a really hard situation because i kept kind of fucking myself over in a way going back to him and going back to hang out with him and sleeping with him and dating him like we would hang out for two days straight and go on all these cute dates and it was really confusing for me and anyway i know that it sounds like i was being dumb and i probably was but i made the decision that day to stop seeing him get myself out of that situation stop causing myself unnecessary stress and just let it go and honestly i'm really i was really proud of myself for doing it because it's hard like when you like someone and when you enjoy your time with them it's hard to just cut it off like I'm sure you can relate but yeah so bit of a personal one um moving swiftly along number four tried on a bunch of old clothes that were once tight but were now loose and baggy so I just lost 12 kilos and got into my goal weight at this point and I kind of was in this really unhealthy mindset I guess because I'd wanted to lose this weight for so long and once I had, I almost didn't notice it. So I had a bit of a declutter and I remember I did a video on it. I tried on all these clothes and they were all super loose on me. Like my jeans from winter were like out here and it was just crazy. So I remember just feeling so proud of myself and I finally like noticed the results. So that was a really nice moment. Number five, my friend from England that I said I shared New Year's with came to visit me and we went to Sydney. We just had the best time. Also did a vlog on that as well, um, but it was just honestly the nicest time. We had kind of the whole of February together, which is kind of ironic because we don't see each other for years at a time. And then I go for Christmas and New Year's and then she comes here in February. So we kind of planned it pretty weirdly because it was like we saw each other twice within three months of each other. But it was just a really nice time. Number six or nine. Oh God. Six, six. I got one of my reports from uni published in a journal. So I don't know about other universities. I assume it's all the same worldwide, but you have your sources for essays and reports and stuff are all from journals. So journal articles and academic sources. And mine, one of my reports got published in a HD high distinction journal. So that was awesome. Like, I honestly did not think it was that great. I remember handing it in, being really stressed, and I ended up getting a really good mark for it. And yeah, it got published in this journal, so I just thought that was a really cool achievement. Number seven was I saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers live, and oh my god, band girls hardcore, lived my best life. They were amazing. They're one of my favorite bands ever. I've loved them since I was a teenager and I always have wanted to see them live. So I got to kind of tick it off my bucket list and just have the best night. Number eight. So the, sorry, one of those said I went to Sydney with my friend Lizzie, which was my English friend. And that one says we went to Byron Bay. So I obviously did the two different trips as two different achievements or memories, I should say. Number nine, saw Anne-Marie with my friend Annie. So me and my friend Annie from uni, really liked her songs and stuff and we got to go see her live in brisbane so that was really fun number 10 got a hd in all of my task ones for every subject so i got high distinctions which is the best mark you can get for every single first piece of assessment for that kind of semester so i just was so proud i remember thinking like Oh my god, imagine if I got one for every piece of assessment this semester, that would be amazing. And I think I got 10 out of 12, so it was a pretty good one. I probably just spoiled an upcoming one, I think I did. Number 11, Eleanor's wedding, did a speech as a song, was lovely and fun. So the friend that asked me to be her maid of honor, obviously went to the wedding, and my maid of honor speech, I did a song. I did a speech, and then I did a song, um, and it was just a really cool moment. Like it was a really nice memory. So I was really kind of proud of it. I think she really enjoyed it and liked it. So it was just kind of a really cherished memory that hopefully both of us will remember forever. Number 12, finally feel confident and know what I want in a career. So, oh my God, this is, this is tiny, but it was a big moment for me because I've spent my whole life crying over not knowing what to do with my life feeling really unsure questioning everything never feeling like i kind of had a place in the world because i just felt like oh god i don't know what to do i don't know what i like and 
I got to the point last year where I was really enjoying my marketing degree and just kind of really was like, wow, this is what I want to do. I finally found it. I was confident. I was getting clients and I loved life. So that was a really important moment. Kind of a different place now, but that's another video. <laughs> Number 13, three HDs in a social media course. So again, this was just for the for a one subject, a social media subject that I did, and I got all high distinctions for all my assessment in that subject. I guess that was important to me because I'm doing social media marketing as a degree, so getting it in that subject was really cool. Number 14, weighed 62 kilos eating keto. So I got down to 65, which is my ideal weight, and I was really happy with 65. But my lowest weight that year was 62 and it kind of went from 65 to 62 through eating keto. So that's kind of why I try to stick to keto because it just works better for my body. But that was a really big achievement because I was like, wow, it's working. All my hard work's paying off. Number 15 is I finished semester one, 2019 and all my exams. Not like a huge like, oh my god, I got all these great marks, blah, 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 but more the feeling of finishing that semester was indescribable. Like, I've never been so relieved to finish a semester, so I put it in the jar. And you know what? You gotta celebrate those things sometimes. It was a really hard semester. <laughs> Number 16. There we go. 10 out of 12 high distinctions for the semester. Again, I know I kept, it's kind of repetitive, but it's like, I don't think you realize how great it is how great a feeling it is for your work to be like marked well and for you to get that high mark and that high praise. It's a good time. I also got a scholarship out of it, which, oh my God, again, I think I just ruined one of the achievements, but yay. <laughs> Number 17 is super cash turned 24. And I put that in there because it's like, it was like, wow, I'm 24, fuck, but cool. Number 18, so this one, basically it just says Facebook marketing sessions. And so I went to this series of Facebook seminars that Facebook held in my local area for small businesses and I networked hardcore and I got a few people interested in hiring me. And then number 19 is got my first paying, paying client. So from that networking, I managed to kind of acquire some of my first clients in my social media marketing business, which is still on the side it's like a side hustle it's not really a business fully fledged yet but that was a really big achievement for me because obviously it was like my first paycheck as this marketing professional so that was really cool number 20 is got another scholarship awarded to me there we go i'm really sorry i'm like jumping ahead with these assumptions and yeah i shouldn't 21 invited to join golden key international honor society so basically, with all my marks um, being really good, there's this society called Golden Key, and you have to be in the top, I think it's 5% of your uni. And it's really cool, they give you all these benefits, um, you get like money for doing well, you get internships, um, you get overseas study programs offered to you, and things like that. So it's really cool. And I was really proud that I got invited to that. Number 22, I got four high distinctions at uni again. So I got them for all four subjects in my semester two as well. I feel so braggy doing this, but it's like, I'm just, I put in so much hard work. So when I, when you get the high marks, you really feel proud. The next one is that I signed my first full-time paying client. So I signed my first six month contract with a client consistently paying me. And it was quite a lot of money, so I was really proud of that. And the last two are just kind of cute personal ones. So 20, I think we're up to 22 or 3. I met Regan, which is my current boyfriend. And that's been just lovely and amazing. And the last one is celebrating Christmas and New Year in America with my family. So that was my 2019 jar. If you guys want to do something like that next year i mean oh my god this year 2020 definitely do it it's such a cool idea and you get to kind of reflect on your year and really realize like how much you achieved so i hope that i gave you a bit of inspo i hope that you enjoyed my jar and thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye I